Thank you for watching QTV News. We take a look at stories making headlines in our news. Zambia has recorded the first two cases of coronavirus. Health Minister Chitalu Chirufia has announced. Stakeholders still feel proposed amendments by government to Bill 10 fall short of addressing their concerns and insist the bill should be withdrawn from Parliament. And the quarterfinal matches of the APSA Cup, which was scheduled for this weekend, have been called off in view of the coronavirus. And now the news in detail. Health Minister Chitalu Chirufia has announced the country's first two confirmed cases of coronavirus. Dr. Chirufia has told a media briefing that the two cases involve a Zambian couple who traveled to France for a 10-day holiday with their two children. He says the couple returned back home via KK International Airport on Sunday, 15 March, aboard an Emirates airplane. Dr. Chirufia says because the alert surveillance system at the airport, the travel history picked that they passed through a country that had COVID-19 cases on the rise and that for this reason the family was placed under self-quarantine. He says 24 hours after being placed on self-quarantine, surveillance officers who visited the family established that one of the family members has developed a fever and flu and that after conducting tests, results showed that the husband and wife has laboratory confirmed COVID-19. Mr. Chirufia says a couple, the couple and their two children have been isolated at the designated COVID-19 isolation facility in Chilanga district where they are receiving treatment. The health minister has however stated that there is no need for panic following the two cases recorded, urging people to adhere to basic measures of washing hands and cleaning their surroundings. More in the following report. Zambia has become the latest southern African country to confirm the first coronavirus cases with some affected countries shutting down borders and suspending flights amid fears of virus as the risk of virus spread has continued to be very high globally. As of Tuesday, 17th March 2020, over 180,000 cases and 7,130 dates have been recorded globally with a daily increase of over 10,000. Health Minister Dr. Chitalu Chilufia announced that a couple that had traveled to France with their two children were tested positive for COVID-19. Zambia has confirmed its first two cases of COVID-19 uh, virus. The patients are a Zambian couple that traveled to France on a 10-day holiday with their two children. They came back on Sunday and they passed through our international airport and because of our alert surveillance system, the travel history did pick that they passed through a country where COVID-19 cases were on the rise. For this reason, both the father, the mother, and their two children were placed under self-quarantine. 24 hours later, our alert surveillance officers made a follow-up to the couple, and they found them observing the self-quarantine rules. And they did find out that one of the members of the family did develop a fever and a flu. They conducted tests, and the test results were released this morning. And the two, the mother, the father, have laboratory confirmed COVID-19. Dora Celia is chief government spokesperson. The minister also did tell us last Saturday that he had discouraged people traveling out of Zambia. And this is for our own benefit to try and keep us uh, safe. Uh, that was part of the press brief uh, on Saturday. Uh, on Saturday, the minister also emphasized personal hygiene. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're a waiter, you're a barman, you're a, an officer in an office, you're a secretary, you're a PS, you're a minister, even His Excellency the President. We all have to adhere to personal hygiene, washing our hands regularly. And the United Nations, together with the United States, have committed to supporting Zambia strengthen its surveillance. In the next few days, the uh, our embassy leadership will be making an announcement for the support of the Zambian government 
we're in this together. Um, we're here with you, our families are here, so it's not just protecting the rest of them, but it's also protecting ourselves. Uh, we want to commit our support to you. We will continue to work with your team to strengthen surveillance, to track those who came on that airline or any other one, or any other people that might be at high risk. We will also continue to work with you in strengthening the laboratory capacity and scaling that up so we have the capacity to test people who need test them. We want today to express our solidarity as a UN family, and I'm sure I can talk on behalf of cooperating partners, our solidarity with the government of Zambia and with the people of Zambia. We are here to support and to stay and deliver in any way possible. Let's adhere to the public health measures that the minister, the honorable minister, just listed. Meanwhile, following the restriction on all public gatherings, in an effort to prevent people from contracting the coronavirus, government cancelled the commissioning of the Science, Technology, Engineering and Mathematics Education Training Center and establishment of STEM schools in Zambia as a precautionary measure. Lusaka Mayor Mao Sampa, who was invited to attend the event, expressed concern that there were no buckets of water at the event. As you can see, uh, look around, uh, there's no buckets of water where people can wash their hands. And just when I was coming in, the, the security there did put hand sanitizer on my hand with a sprayer. But I don't think everybody did that. While the Ministry of Health have asked citizens not to panic following two confirmed cases of the coronavirus, it remains the responsibility of every Zambian to uphold the highest standard of hygiene in order to avoid contracting the virus. Favorite Grando, QTV News in Lusaka. The Law Association of Zambia says government's proposed amendments to the Constitution Amendment Bill Number 10 of 2019 fall short in addressing the concerns of stakeholders. Lars President Ed Mwitwa has told Q News in an interview that the amendments do not address issues of concern in relation to the genesis of the bill. Mr. Mwitwa has argued that the bill cannot be cleaned up while it is undergoing the legislative process of parliament. He says as a member of the Oasis Forum, Lars is of the view that the best way is to start the constitution amendment process on a platform where all stakeholders buy into the process. Mr. Mudra says Lars does not see the need to rush the process of amending the bill on the floor of parliament as proposed by government. He states that this is especially that there is still suspicion among various stakeholders that the constitution amendment bill number 10 of parliament does not mean well. First and foremost, I want to mention to you that um, cabinet officers set up a committee of permanent secretaries that is looking at the, 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 the work that relates to the preparedness of uh, attacking the, the COVID-19. So in that uh, committee, we have a representation from different ministries, and in particular, I just want to mention the Ministry of Health. They are the lead um, ministry, if I can put it like that. So in terms of ensuring that that message gets to the visually impaired, indeed we are working with Ministry of Health, who I believe have uh, a fund that uh, basically has been set up to ensure that uh, as a country we are ready for, 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 for this virus. And um, one of the segments of that fund, or one of the allocations of that fund is basically communication. And I think this is where the issue of ensuring that uh, this message uh, reaches the visually uh, impaired people comes in. So, so yes, we have uh, the fund set up and um, set aside for the Ministry of Health. And Chapter 1 Foundation Executive Director Linda Kasonde has called upon government to withdraw the Constitution Amendment Bill Number 10 of 2019 following its apparent compromise of some contentious provisions stakeholders opposed. Ms. Kasonde says in view of the fact that the bill has been presented for second reading in its original form, there is a danger of it going to the third reading without the proposed cabinet amendments. Ms. Kasonde, who is also former Law Association of Zambia Law's president, states that her foundation therefore calls on all patriotic members of parliament to do their civic duty by rejecting Bill 10. She says even if the proposed amendments to the bill were accepted, there are still several dangers, dangerous clauses in it which government has accepted.
So our position is that we urge all patriotic members of parliament to do their civic duty by rejecting Bill 10 in its entirety because it has extremely dangerous clauses, even if the minister's so-called proposals were accepted, which parliament is under no obligation to do. Parliament has no obligation to accept any proposals, whether from cabinet or whether from parliamentary select committee. So even if any of those proposals were accepted, there's still several very dangerous clauses in the bill that the government has accepted. So as we say, we, we reject the bill in its entirety. Withdraw the bill, reject it. But Justice Minister Gavin Lubinda has insisted that government will not withdraw the Constitution Amendment Bill Number 10 of 2019 from Parliament. Mr. Lubinda has told QNews that the amendment of any bill to include recommendations from committee reports is the business of Parliament. Because Justice Minister, I presented a bill for second reading. That's what I promised the Zambian people I would do. I told the Zambian people I will present the bill for second reading. Didn't I present it? Tell them that uh, this is parliament business and can only be handled by parliamentarians and through parliament. Parliament has adjourned sign die in view of the outbreak of the coronavirus, which has seen Zambia record two confirmed cases so far. The House has been adjourned after several points of orders from members of Parliament from both the ruling and opposition members of Parliament were raised questioning whether it was in order for the House to continue sitting in the midst of the pandemic when, according to health regulations, required people to sit further about a, let, a, a meter apart for a large gathering to be discouraged. After consultations with health officials on the matter, the Speaker of the National Assembly, Dr. Patrick Matibini, called upon the Vice President to move a motion of adjournment, which was supported by all members of Parliament. And this morning, order, in view of the coronavirus pandemic, I beg to move that the House will now adjourn. The question is that in accordance with standing order 331 of the National Assembly of Zambia, standing order 2016, and in view of the coronavirus pandemic, the House do not adjourn Senegal. Earlier on, the House adjourned temporarily for more than three hours following a point of order raised by Mazabuka Central Member of Parliament, Garin Kombo, on Bill 10, which was currently under debate, questioning whether the House was in order to debate a matter which is active before the courts of law in Zambia. Mr. Nkombo brought to the attention of the Speaker that matters surrounding Bill 10 have been taken before the court by Deepak Patel of Lusaka. Mr. Nkombo contended that when the motion to start impeachment proceedings against President Lungu were brought on the floor of the House, the Speaker of the National Assembly ruled that Parliament could not debate a matter that was active before the court of law, hence throwing out or staying the motion to impeach the President. Mr. Speaker, would this House therefore be in order to continue to deal both with the issue of the UTEN, which contains this particular article that I've quoted in this document from court. And it is my prayer that in your ruling, after you've studied the matter, you will, like you've done before, halt the proceedings of the Constitutional Bill Number 10 until this matter is disposed of in the Court of Law. I thank you, sir. that uh, the point of order that has been raised that is a business that we are just about to commence so in order for me to exercise my judgment properly I want to briefly uh, look at uh, the process in question uh, therefore, stand up in the proceedings. Yeah. And uh, when I return, yeah. at least I have an idea uh, what this process is all about. Uh, so that. 
And after retiring to the chambers for more than three hours to study the documents filed by Mr. Nkombo, retaining to the Bill 10, be, being before the courts of law in Zambia, he returned and informed the House that he needed more time to thoroughly study the matter. The honorable member referred to, I fell stated that since the point of order hinged on the business that the House was just about to commence consider our stand down the proceedings for me to exercise my judgment properly. Honorable members, I have since started the point of order and I wish to state that given the issues raised and other documents and precedents, both judicial and most founded by parliamentary practice and procedure, that I need to further study to enable me render a measure response. I require more time to ponder over the point of order. The ruling Patriotic Front has postponed the Lusaka provincial election slated for 20th March 2020 until further notice. This follows government's announcement that Zambia has recorded its first two confirmed cases of coronavirus. Party Secretary General says the party will adhere to all health measures that government has put in place in order to avoid further cases. Mr. Mwila has directed all party officials to adhere to rules of hygiene and report any suspected cases to the nearest health facility so that appropriate measures can be taken to avoid new cases. He has since announced that the Lusaka district elections went well and all new office bearers are urged to get to work immediately. Earlier, Chief Government Spokesperson Dora Sidiya said that there are no exemptions on the measures government has put in place, stressing that they apply to all. Ms. Sidiya said government is discouraging huge gatherings, thus the need by the ruling party to consider its decision to hold the district and provincial elections. She has told journalists at a media briefing that the Patriotic Front should comply with the call and lead by example. I think this is the same government that is discouraging large gatherings. They be political, they be social, they be business. It's the same government that is discouraging uh, large uh, gatherings. And uh, if the, the PF uh, had been planning on uh, holding large gatherings, I am sure that they too will heed the call from government and lead by example that there will be no large gatherings because we want to ensure that uh, health first for the people of Zambia. So that is the message. There are no exceptions. Uh, everybody should heed uh, the call uh, by the Minister of Health and His Excellency, the President, that we are discouraging large gatherings so that uh, we can contain this uh, disease in Zambia. And uh, we want to make sure that all the civil society constitution agenda Siska is certain that its members were barred from attending parliament to follow proceedings on the second reading of the constitution amendment bill number 10 on account of the coronavirus. Siska Media and Publicity Chairperson McDonald Chibenzi says this is considering that the organization had already written to parliament to allow its affiliate members and institutions to be present in the public gallery to follow the Bill 10 proceedings as it came for second reading. Mr. Chipenzi says the ban is contrary to what Justice Minister Given Lubinda told the nation not too long ago that members of the public are free to attend and follow the proceedings on Bill 10 at Parliament. He adds that Parliament is a place where rights and freedoms of the people should be upheld. Parliament is a place where rights and freedoms should be upheld and not to be a place of oppression, a place of suppression. Every time there is a contentious issue, you find military personnel around that, 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 that space. For what? Even the UK, when they were debating uh, the, the, the Brexit, you didn't see such kind of military uh, people around. You didn't see that kind of scrutiny. There were even people who were demonstrating outside the parliament. What are we afraid of us, of ourselves as, as Zambia? Really, that, that house is turning into a dictatorship. We feel so embarrassed that a, a house of democracy, a house of liberty, is now 
getting patience for economic progress pp president sean tembo has described as irrational the decision by government through the minister of information and broadcasting services to ban journalists from prime tv from covering government related events over the station's rejection of government's request to air free public awareness messages on coronavirus in a statement issued, Chief Government Spokesperson Dora Celia said government has with immediate effect ceased to cooperate with Prime Television in telling that all government agents and public officers will not appear on the television station nor conduct any media business paid for or otherwise until further notice. Mr. Tembo says the statement by the minister does not reflect well on the overall standing of government from the perspective of an ordinary citizen. He says it is immoral for government to demand for free goods or services under the excuse of an impending public health emergency, regardless of whether the demand free goods or services are face masks from private pharmacies or free advertisements from private TV stations. Mr. Tembo says a private company such as a TV station is only obliged to meet its statutory obligations such as paying tax, NAPSA, workers' compensation and license fees. He states that it is the duty of government to ensure that the tax revenue which it collects from private companies and others is properly utilized and that some reserves are maintained to be utilized in times of public health emergencies such as COVID-19. We are very, very disappointed with the statement that was issued yesterday by the Minister for Information and Broadcasting Services, uh, Ms. Dora Siria, regarding Prime TV where she indicated that uh, her government had decided to cut all ties with Prime TV simply because Prime TV is alleged to have rejected a request for donation in the form of uh, free advertisements on this station. It must be noted that um, a private company does not have any obligation to donate anything free of charge to the government. The only obligation that a private company has is to pay its taxes and meet uh, statutory obligations and not to make a donation. And um, when you look at what other governments are doing across the world, they are actually giving stimulus packages to private companies to help them stay. Consumer Unity and Trust Society Cut Center Director Chinai Mukumba says it is imperative for retailers to clearly indicate to consumers what they must abide by when purchasing either goods or services. Ms. Mukumba says this is if at all a retailer wishes to restrict the amount of goods or services a consumer can purchase. Reacting to the arrest of youths who had gone to a named supermarket to buy millimole for resale, Ms. Mukumba says if indeed there are restrictions, the onus is on the retailer to clearly indicate or put up a visible sign to all consumers with information of what quantity or a particular product a consumer can buy. She adds that without this in place, it would be unfair for police to arrest a consumer for buying a particular product in bulk which is not restricted. It is imperative that retailers clearly demarcate if there are any restrictions that consumers must abide, abide by in purchasing either a good or service. And if there are, it is imperative that that retailer clearly demarcates or puts in an area that is visible to all consumers how much of a particular quantity of either a good or a service a consumer can buy. Without this, it would be unfair for consumers to have police called on them for buying uh, an amount of a particular good that they um, require. Zambia Railways Limited Chief Executive Officer Christopher Msonda says that vandalism of the railway system infrastructure is costly on the locomotive company. Speaking during the open day for executive committees of Zambia Railways in Kawe, Mr. Msonda said vandalism is a criminal offense and warned the vandals of serious consequences. Details in the following. The report. executive committee of Zambia Railways in Kawe has held and utilized an open day to service the point machines. Yotam Piri is Zambia Railways Engineering Superintendent for Signals and Telecommunications and now explains how the point machine functions. A motor switch or switch machine is a device for operating railway tenant, especially at a distance, ideally. Modern point machines have electric motor and gears to convert the rotational motion 
of the motor into a linear motion required to switch the points. The gear assembly also provides required transition ratio so that it generates necessary force to move the switch blades. The machine performs the following functions. Moving switch blades, locking the blades, detection, and proving the position of the blade. Meanwhile, Zambia Railways Limited Operations Manager, Vyonzi Manda, says most of the derailments the company has experienced in the past are linked to the point of machines. The focus today, as touched on by the senior station master, is to work on the, the points. Uh, we have realized, CEO, that in the past year especially, uh, most of the derailments that we had we are linked to, to the points. And under the, your direction, you guided and instructed that as management we take the lead in uh, working on the points. And Zambia Railways Limited Chief Executive Officer Christopher Msonde says point machines are critical components of the rail system but has not been spared by vendors. Mr. Msonde has since issued a stern warning against the saboteurs, adding that some people are already appearing in the courts of law. I want to take this advantage and opportunity to, of yourselves uh, to warn the people involved in the vandalizing the rail line, either by picking up the clips or the plates or the wires, that the punishment involved to that we shall prosecute anybody involved in that activity. We already have some people appeared in courts, arrests, who are now in cells. So we shall, we shall be vigilant and ensure that whoever is found, we expose him to the appropriate law of prosecuting him. We hope that will reduce the number of vandalism. But also important, we should warn the market where these things are being sold. Because everybody who is vandalizing, they are heading for some place to sell. So we are also warning the people involved in procurement of the stolen materials from railways that they will also be found prosecuted if they are specifically found in rail materials. The Council Against Vandalism of Rail Infrastructure must be taken serious. This is so because any derailment leads to loss of time, value for money and capacity by the locomotive company. Zenis reports in Kawi, Central Province. Nakonde member of parliament, Yizukanji Siwanzi, says surveillance has been heightened at the Nakonde Tunduma border in an effort to prevent the outbreak of coronavirus in the district. Mr. Siwanzi says surveillance has been heightened at the border following three confirmed cases of COVID 19 in neighboring Tanzania. Mr. Siwanzi says Ministry of Health officials and other stakeholders are working together to sensitize people in the district of the coronavirus. The, the, the screening has been intensified at the border. You know, people who are traveling from uh, countries which uh, have been hit by this uh, uh, disease uh, are being screened, you know, just to make sure that we do not have anyone who's, who have got those symptoms entering our country. I've seen at the border at Naponde, uh, whenever the, 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 what the visitors are going through immigration, they have to first pass through Ministry of Health uh, stands. And at that point is where they are being screened before they enter into Zambia. So uh, I think this is a good thing. We must commend the government. And uh, as area member of parliament, I think uh, uh, working together with my councillors, we will make sure that we sensitize the community on uh, uh, you know, the, 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 how we can prevent this disease, if at all, if there will be anyone infected in our area from spreading from uh, one to the other person. But so far, so good. I think we do not have any... ...fundamental role to any net-worthy development of any nation if goods and services are to be delivered to the intended destination in good time for timely productivity, which would impact on the lives of the citizens. This is still a challenge in many parts of the country, with most roads in an unacceptable state. More details in this report. Mwadi Zachani.
The Zambian government is ever determined to provide its nationals with a good road network both in the rural parts of the country and indeed in the urban settlements. In Wapula province, government is aware of the horrors of the poor road network and in redress, Wapula province minister Nixon Chilangwa is seeking other possibilities to improve the road network of the province as one way of accelerating development in Wapula. As a province, we have a big meeting with EU and uh, led by the French Embassy in Lusaka. And what we want to present is, can they help us in ensuring that we finance some of the most difficult road conditions that we have? The Milenge Road, Matanda Road, those are the new Greenfield Road projects. We cannot continue saying we have good connectivity in Wapula province when the road from Unchelenge to Mansa is almost finishing, when the road from here to Tuta to Chembe is almost gone. So we have a huge responsibility as government to ensure that we mobilize resources and we shall not leave this to central government alone. And Mr. Joseph Maopu is Wapula Exposition Coordinator and shares some of the projects that have derived from the 2017 Wapula Expo. After 2017, the provincial administration pushed the agenda to accelerate. The first one, Your Royal Highnesses, we were talking about Congo, is the Mwenda Kasomeno Road, which passes through Chief Mulundu, Chief Kashiva, Chief Mutipula, and the Mwenda Chief Dom. This project will see a bridge constructed at Chalwe and a brand new road connecting Lubumbashi and Dar es Salaam. This project is starting on 1st May 2020. So your Royal Highnesses, once this project starts, it's going to take 36 months to complete. Mr. Maopu also pointed out to the chiefs who came in their numbers drawn from within the province during the Natwampa Nechapamu meeting held at Henry Courtyard Lodge in Mansa of the recent progress that government has been making in other key sectors such as energy. There's a company after Msonda power station in Chief Mulundu's area. They are doing 20 megawatts of power at a place uh, called uh, Kavila. With this determination, Wapula province will soon be an anchorage of economic activity. Reporting for the NIST News in Mansa District, I'm Isaac Daka. The Zambia National Union of Teachers, ZANUT, has attributed the improved attendance of vulnerable pupils in various schools to the success of feeding programs that government is implementing. ZANUT spokesperson Joe Kasaka says the government should help grow this program because it has also helped teachers in terms of retention and re-enrollments. Mr. Kasaka says this initiative must be extended to districts currently not catered. He notes that most children in schools come from poor homes and that the program motivates them to go to school so that they can have a meal. In the morning, you, have not, you will not have the power to wake up and go to school. But if they want to say, at school there is something they are going to eat, you will discover that the child is going to be motivated to go into school because they are going to eat something from school. And as such, they will be eating from school. At the same time, they will benefit by learning from, uh, from school. So what we are saying is that uh, the beneficiaries of, uh, of feeding programs have uh, remained in the school. Most of them, uh, I can say three quarters of the children that have been attending school where there is a feeding program have uh, maintained, they've remained in school without uh, dropping off. So what we are encouraging the government is that there are some schools that have not yet been reached. So what we are saying is that this program can it be rolled over to all the districts so that the children that are coming from vulnerable families that have not been benefiting, let them also benefit so that they remain in. And finally, in sports, Absa Bank Zambia and the Football Association of Zambia FAS have postponed the Absa Cup quarterfinals matches which was scheduled for this coming weekend at Lusaka's Nkoloma Stadium. This follows national and international guidance on the COVID-19 gathering and travel restrictions. Commenting on the development, First General Secretary Adrian Kashala says the association's key priority is to safeguard the football, players, fans, 
associates and the general public. Kashala says it is for this reason that Faz and Absa have decided to postpone the matches until a later date to be announced to avoid any risk that may arise. And Absa Bank Zambia PLC Head of Marketing and Corporate Relations, Mato Shimavale, says the bank is closely monitoring the spread of COVID-19 and is taking the well-being of customers, employees, stakeholders and the public at large very seriously. The postponed matches involve Nkana versus Quito United, Zesco United versus Forest Rangers and Napsa Stars versus Cabo Warriors and Green Eagles versus Young Green Eagles. To end the news, we wake up on stories making headlines. Zambia has recorded the first two cases of coronavirus, Health Minister Chitalo Chilufia has announced. Stakeholders still feel proposed amendments by government to Bill 10 fall short of addressing their concerns and insist the bill should be withdrawn from Parliament. And the quarterfinal matches of the ABSA Cup, which was scheduled for this weekend, have been called off in view of the coronavirus. On that sporting item, we end the news. Thank you.